Hi folks, welcome to another session. Today we're looking at direct factor 10a inhibitors, specifically for rivaroxaban and apixaban. We'll have a look at the presentation of both, the mechanism of action, the usage and the trials associated with that, some of the side effects, pharmacokinetics, and from an ITU point of view, reversal in overdose. If we start with presentation, both medications are tablet-based medications. They both have a variety of dosages and that's frequently dependent on what it's being used for. Like the direct thrombin inhibitors, there's no active monitoring or blood test that tells you the level of anticoagulation. However, just like the direct thrombin inhibitors, they've got a very predictable onset and mechanism of action, regardless of sex, age and weight, so they're very predictable and safe in terms of their anticoagulation effect. When we look at the mechanism of action, as I've said, they're direct factor 10a inhibitors. What that means is there's no effect on the intrinsic or the extrinsic components of the coagulation cascade. They predominantly and exclusively exert their effect within the common component of the coagulation cascade. And you can see that in the diagram currently demonstrated on the screen now. When we think about usages of these medications, both have a license in prophylaxis following knee and hip surgery. Both have a license in the treatment of and prophylaxis of venothrombotic events such as PE or DVT. Both have a license in the risk reduction and prevention of thrombotic events and stroke risks when associated with atrial fibrillation. And rivaroxaban has a licensed postmyocardial infarction to help manage atherosclerotic events as well. When we think about the trials that are important for these, the first one is the Aristotle trial that was in the New England Journal in 2011 that looked at apixaban. It showed that it was superior to warfarin in reducing the risk of thrombotic events in atrial fibrillation. It also demonstrated there was a less chance of intracranial hemorrhage and general bleeds when compared with warfarin. However, the incidences of GI bleed were about equivocal between the two drugs. The second trial, also in the New England Journal in 2011, is the Rocket AF trial. That found that uh, rivaroxaban was neither superior nor worse to warfarin in preventing thromboembotic events in atrial fibrillation. But it did find that rivaroxaban had a significantly reduced amount of intracranial hemorrhage and generalised bleeding and GI bleeding events when compared to warfarin. When we think about the side effects of both medications, as with all oral anticoagulations, there is an increased risk of bleeding, but as we've just discussed regarding the trials, overall the risk is lower than that of warfarin, which has been around a lot longer. With most of the NOAX, there is an element of GI upset, and that is true of both of these agents as well. When we think about the pharmacokinetics, rivaroxaban has an oral bioavailability of about 80 to 100%. It's 70% hepatically metabolized, and therefore doesn't have a lot of renal involvement, and therefore is usable um, in people with low creatinine clearance states, such as a creatinine clearance of 15 or a GFR of 15. Apixaban has about a 50% oral bioavailability, and it's also significantly hepatically metabolized and again can also be used in low um, creatinine clearance states of 15 GFR or 15 creatinine clearance as well. When we think about the reversibility of both of these agents, the first thing to note is they've both got high plasma protein binding, which means they're not um, amenable to CVVHDF or dialysis. Um, when we look at the British Hematological Society guidelines, they recommend in the absence of using a direct anticoagulant reversal agent, generalised hemostatic measures, PCC and recumbent factor 7A. Now in terms of reversing the direct um, factor 10A inhibitors, there is now a product on the market which has a licence for reversal of all of the factor 10A inhibitors. It's called um, Andonexant Alpha. It's essentially a recombinant decoy version of factor 10A. Uh, which has a higher binding preference to whichever factor 10A inhibitor you're using. So by default, the drug will bind to the um, reversal agent over preference to the um, in vivo uh, ACT factor 10A. This has been proven to be successful um, in a number of trials, but the most important one was the Annexa 4 trial in 2011, and that demonstrated that Reversal was very, very successful when using the appropriate agents.